two questions. One, what are the exact steps that consumers can do that would help the most with the exact issues we're speaking about, chemicals, GMOs, glyphosate, pesticides, the food system, um, the impact it's having on our health and nature, and what are the exact policies you want government to take? So in other words, if somehow um, we got a politician that said, I care what you six say, I will do what you say, I read Julian Cribb's book, I heard Jeffrey Smith speak, I read Ronnie's new book, I read Stephanie's book and Andre's book and Joanna's book, I want to do it. But um, I don't really have time to do the research to tell me the exact government policy you want me to pass. I'll get it passed. What is it that you want? So what are you exactly, not a theoretical pep talk, what exactly can I and everyone listening do to have the greatest impact on this, our health and the environment? What exactly do you want the government to do? What would be the policies you'd like to see put in place? You could each, each comment on this. Um, you could each comment on this. Sure thing. So just in terms of being a consumer, I would say just do the right thing for yourself. You know, buy things that you know what they are. Sometimes uh, it'll mean investing in something. Sometimes it'll mean just simplifying your life, but really take care of yourself and do the right thing for yourself. And there's a lot at this con that's been discussed at this conference that'll help you do that. Uh, in terms of policy for, for regulators, for government, we really need to focus on getting companies to transition to really becoming sustainable, truly sustainable companies that are producing something that's adding value. And we need clear deadlines. Now, people who go work for the EPA, they do so because they are interested in the science, they're interested in health. They have a lot of skills. And uh, they need to put those skills into actually helping companies transition. And there needs to be deadlines. Right now, a lot of those people are spending time um, copying, pasting. They're uh, doing uh, just analysis to keep busy. And they're do doing things to basically avoid sticking their necks out. Instead, they need to be out there right with the company with a clear, fast deadline, helping them no nonsense transition and doing whatever it takes. Yeah, I'd like to follow on with what Joanna was saying. And I think the most powerful tool is voting with your wallet and making informed choices. So, you know, actively avoid foods that have pesticides and chemicals. Try to work out how you can stop using plastic, stop using single use plastics and start using natural products. Look at how you can reduce your environmental footprint, your climate change footprint. In other words, be a thoughtful consumer. This is what drives companies to change. This is why things like coal start to become a, a stranded asset. That's why companies now are looking at how they offset their emissions and how they can reduce their emissions. It's government's policies had a bit of a role, but the truth is the market is the strongest um, deliverer of change. You you take away you, you take away their customers and their income, and they will change. And I know that for when I used to be the international president of the organic sector, we um, did so much change with people going to organic that all the major brands now had to have organic lines, so they did not contract. They used to invite me to dinner with them to talk about how they could do it. The consumer dollar is the most effective. And I wanna say it's effective with governments because governments, you know, I, I've dealt with governments all around the world and I've got calluses on my head from hitting my head against a brick wall with them. Governments don't lead, they follow. We get industry to change, governments will follow. Yeah, as for uh, the, the personal uh, solutions, eat fresh, eat local, and eat organic. And take that philosophy into everything else that you purchase, right? Everything you buy. When you go to the supermarket and spend a dollar, you are voting for the future that your children and grandchildren will inherit. 
whether you like it or not. Make that vote something for a habitable earth, not for an uninhabitable slag heap populated only by microbes, which is what we're creating. Every act of consumption has chemical consequences, right? We need to bear that in mind and we need to teach that to, our, to, our, to, every, to one another um, and to our children. Now, why it's such a big problem, or why it's so difficult. If you put them all together, the coal, the oil, the gas, and the petrochemical industry are worth $7 trillion. They are the third largest economy on earth. So after the US, 17 trillion, after China, 10 trillion, coal, oil, and gas, and petrochemicals are worth $7 trillion. That means they can buy and sell any government they like, including the US government, including the Australian government, including the British government, and we're seeing them do this now. That they're no longer individual companies. They, they are a, you know, a, 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 an organization. And this all came out of the, the Koch brothers and, and that sort of nonsense, but they, they, they've now allied themselves worldwide. And they control people like Putin, uh, you know, who is a petro state you know, actor. So, you know, they are a very big target. And the answer for dealing with them, I'm afraid, is the one that Andre has said. We have to mobilize the population of the earth because governments are not going to do it for us. They are not going to dare to challenge this vast conglomerate. You know, they, they haven't got the guts and they have already been bought and sold in the marketplace. And when they retire from politics, they all go and sit on the board of one of these corrupt companies. OK, so the only way we can we can address this, I don't believe we can shut these companies down. I think we have to lead them to the safe place where they start to market the things that are safe, the chemicals that are safe, um, the foods that are safe and, and so on. Uh, and we can only drive them there with, with, with their love of the dollar. And that means mobilizing consumers worldwide, all eight billion of us. So, I mean, everyone has said all kinds of good things, and I agree with everything. I just want to reemphasize the importance of organic diet. Uh, certainly, when you shop at the supermarket, always look for the certified organic label. Also, avoid the processed foods. Eat, eat whole foods rather than processed foods, and make sure you feed your entire family with these health, healthy, healthy, wholesome foods. Uh, as far as just keeping personally, keeping your family safe and healthy. I think as far as community activity, I, I think that the, I agree that the US government is pretty much hopeless. I've tried and it's extremely frustrating to try to get to the EPA and try to explain to them why they need to do something different. But I think at the local government, people have a better chance to have, be effective. And um, so people can get involved in local politics, make sure that they're not using glyphosate on the schoolyards, make sure they're not using it in public places, for example. And, um, you know, canvassing at locally at, with the government, you can have an impact there, much more likely to actually get legislation done, making sure the water's safe, uh, those sorts of things. Um, I, I think that it's good to spend more time in the kitchen. I think we've been trained that we should be, uh, we shouldn't waste time cooking food, you know? And so just go buy the soy protein bar and the potato chips and stuff and just eat really quick and easy, feed your family in a hurry. We need to change that message into really taking more time to cook cook from scratch, you know, and produce um, home cooked meals instead of uh, processed foods. Um, so I think those are maybe my most important points to make. <laughs> yeah, there's there's four main drivers, <clears throat> as I point out in my book, of degeneration in the world. And there's four main drivers of regeneration. And we got to get all these drivers uh, in in synergy at once, if we want to change things. Obviously, consumer awareness and market pressure are one of these. Another one is farmer and landowner and uh, you know healer health innovation. We need to point out these best practices because we already have all the solutions we need in every county in every state and every country and every region of the country. The problem is that people don't know about these positive solutions. So that's part of it. Consumer awareness, market demand, uh, farmer and healer innovation. Politics is and policy are a major thing. One thing Americans, I believe, could agree on rural, urban, middle class, working class, 
no matter what ethnic background, is the government needs to stop taking our tax money and funding degenerative practices. Stop subsidizing corporate agribusiness, chemical intensive, fossil fuel intensive. Stop, you know, funding uh, medical malpractice and you know chemical industrial solutions to health that have tried and true uh, solutions. But beyond stopping the subsidy of degeneration and the destruction of the earth, um, start subsidizing the good stuff, the best practices uh, that are there. And finally, the fourth one, which is the, I believe the elephant in the room is money. There is no way that we're gonna move regenerative practices from being the alternative to the norm without serious money, okay? Right now in the world, there's $125 trillion invested in degenerative financial assets. You know, $125 trillion. We need to start moving money from funding degeneration to regeneration. And if we could just move 1%, to get things going, $1 trillion into regenerative practices, food farming, land use, health, education, you know, anti-war, uh, we will be in a good place. And I know I've spent my whole activist life demonizing uh, the capitalists and the, and the dictators and so on and so forth, the corporate criminals. But I must say, at this point, I believe 1% of the people engaged in finance and in corporate governance, you know, and the people who hold our, our savings and pension funds and so on and so forth. We've got some people on our side, partly because their kids and their grandkids have made them aware and made them ashamed of what they're doing. And we should waste no time, uh, you know, finding that 1% of the economic elite who are ready to work with us because we have the right solutions as we have the money to move forward uh, and scale up the best practices, there'll be a, a landslide of support. Uh, just one, one point that um, there's $20 trillion in the United States in our pension funds. I mean, these are the savings of everyday people for the most part. But why are all the pension funds engaged in investments that are degenerate? You know, uh, why are all the mutual funds worthless? You know, we've got to take back control over our money, move our money in the banks, take our money out of degeneration and put it into regeneration. And I think we're going to win. And the way history works, uh, I mean, I was lucky enough to participate in some of the near revolutions of the 60s in France, you know, and in the United States, uh, places like Czechoslovakia, where people all rose up together and we were a global network of radical students. Uh, history doesn't change uh, in an even way. Things build and build and build. And then like the, the wall, the Berlin Wall, it all comes down. And that's what's going to happen. We're going to build and build and build and build. And at some point, there is going to be a global rising. And we've got to prepare ourselves for that and stay healthy and stay alive for that. I know I intend to keep up this battle for at least 20 more years because that's how long it's going to take. So, mm -hmm. And I'm going to enjoy myself as I go forward because I know the young people, they're looking at us not just about what we say, they're looking at what we do, uh, and there's an instinctive desire of people to join movements where people are happy and positive and things are fun. So in spite of how grim things are, we got to make this grassroots rising uh, as enjoyable uh, as possible and not ignore the spiritual. I believe there are powers out there that we can tap into that can enable us to overcome obstacles that seem impossible. 
You know, I don't know whether it's a interplanetary, uh, you know, alliance that we need or what the hell it is. We can't explain it. But I think there is a power that we can tap into that will carry us through. Thanks. I want to give specific uh, needs for our particular first phase <clears throat> of our GMO 2.0 Protect Nature Now campaign. I'd like everyone who wants to participate to go to protectnaturenow.com. When you go to protectnaturenow.com, there is a film, 16 minutes, called Don't Let the Gene Out of the Bottle. That will give you an understanding that protecting the microbiome is critical for our future. The two main goals of our campaign in the present phase are to block any outdoor release of genetically engineered microbes around the world, creating laws for that, and to stop the gain of function enhancement of potentially pandemic pathogens indoors, because if they get outside, they can decimate the human population. And we see these two as very related requirements. Once you watch the film and understand the, the reason why and the potential cataclysm that, that almost occurred where we might have theoretically lost all terrestrial plant life from one particular genetically engineered microbe or permanently changed weather patterns from another or, or unleashed a pandemic that could have that had a 52% death rate. When you see these bad actors, you realize just how significant it is, but you'll also understand about the general importance of the microbiome for human health and environment. Then go to a, on the same top of the page, go to the advocacy platform. I just checked it. It happens to be a broken link right now. Don't do it today. So, and when you get there, there you can enter information and send, send to your contact information and all of your elected officials show up. And you can, in a click and send, you can send them whatever campaign we've loaded. We've created white papers, legislative reports, the film, uh, layperson's articles, and we send out tens of thousands. Actually, people send out tens of thousands to their elected officials, as well as to their local and regional media, which is another opportunity. And they also can send it into their social media. Then go to the donate tab and donate anything that you can afford to do every month whether it's $5, $10, any amount, so that we can use that to expand our campaign. So watch the movie, go to the advocacy campaign, go to the donate tab. Now, what we want specifically are all of the different groups that whose successes depend on the healthy microbiome to adopt the requirement, the demand that the that genetically engineered microbes be locked down. So regenerative agriculture. When I sent the film to Andre here, he said, it's perfect. It's something that we all want to get behind because regenerative agriculture relies on a healthy microbiome. So we want all regenerative agriculture um, bills to include the insurance policy to block outdoor release of genetically engineered microbes, because if they get out, they can destroy the mechanisms by which regenerative agriculture is a success. We want all environmental conservation bills to have the same lockdown, all ocean conservation bills to have the same lockdown. Invasive species, they need to prevent the release and acceptance of genetically engineered microbes. And all of these should assign harsh liability to those that violate. Human health bills need to include a lockdown on this, as well as the end of potentially pandemic pathogen enhancement. And even national security. In our white papers, we show that the, the Department of Defense, the former National Security Advisors, Homeland Security, they're all very concerned about this new ability to gene edit genomes and said that the technology has far outpaced the regulation. And of course, GMO regulation itself must include a lockdown of genetically, of genetically engineered microbes so they do not escape. So this is the particular focus of our GMO 2.0 campaign right now. Please go to protectnaturenow.com to participate. Thank you.